money, then we lay low, then we lay low. Add it up, add it up, bank roll, bank roll, euro, euro, peso, peso, add it up, add it up. Oh, what's up, guys? Good morning. Devin and I have found ourselves out here with Torrance fishing a private ranch this morning, man. This place is beautiful. It's got pads over here, trees over there. It's a slight breeze this morning. We're out on the Old Town Canoes. We have got the motor powered Autopilot 120 and the pedal drive 106, the PDL 106, you guys. It's going to be a lot of fun. Torrance is already on six fish in like 10 minutes. We've got to get out here. It sounds like the bite's good. Texas rigs seem to be what's hitting, but we're going to throw a variety of baits today, guys. We're plan we also plan on throwing some big swim baits, so stay tuned. Whee! fish on the mission fish first cast come here bud come here yeah no way hey hey check out that first one for me ever actually on the mission fish first cast out here guys no freaking way i'm gonna take it let me get a picture. All right, guys, that's how today's gonna start off. Right there, first fish for us. Oh, and a show. Just got the juice rigged back up. Gonna probably have to use some mend it here in a little bit. Actually, before Weston gets on, I should probably tell him to grab it. Look at these pads, man. Cool place. Deploy the rudder. Cool, let's go. AirPods and keys. Put them in the dry storage and I had decided that I think I'm going to start things off today with the trench hog. Haven't done this in a while. I don't know if it's going to lead to like a ton of bites or not. That's why I'm tying it on. We're going to see. I think this is Alabama Craw, the color. I haven't thrown this one in a while, but this has been one of my best producing colors when I throw the trench hog. I don't know what it is, but specifically, I really like this color for the trench hog because I've gotten a lot of catches on the hog in this color. Does that make sense? Let's see what's up. First cast. First one of the morning. There we go. Not even a bass? No, it is. All right, all right. I'm like, it's got an awkward shape. It's just a little fat. <laughs> Not what we're wanting on the hog. Don't know how I do it, but I managed to do it. And what I mean by that is catching the small fish. Let's get back in the water, man. Yeah, now that we got that out of the way, <laughs> bring on the bigs. When I set the hook, it was a little deceiving. It didn't feel like a uh, quarter pounder. Anyway, so that's life. <laughs> oh, there we go. Fish number two. Gotta horse him up because all these trees. Oh no, he came off. Dang it. Don't get mad. Get glad. Yeah, guys, all these trees, this brush piles and stuff. I'm just trying to let this trench hog fall straight down on slack line right through them. Just being real steady on that first drop, letting it fall all the way to the bottom. Oh my gosh, that was a big top water blow up right there in the uh, pads. And I'm just working it slowly, kind of popping. And then if I feel some resistance, kind of just raising the rod tip smoothly and working it slow when I know I'm kind of working over one of these branches because it's easy to try and like keep popping your Texas rig and you just pop that hook right into a log, some wood, stuff like that. And then you can't get your bait back. So when you feel like you're snagged, that's when you really want to just raise the rod tip smoothly and work your way over that that log or debris and then let it fall back down a lot of times as you come up and over cover and then you let it drop back down that's when you'll get a bite but you got to be smooth with it otherwise even though your hook is text posed into your bait with this texas rig and making it very weedless you will still get snagged in some stuff when you try and pop your texas rig really hard and you go right into a limb or a log so kind of want to get some further cast so they're less aware of my presence oh, there's a bite. oh man Oh, he had it, but he let it go. No, he didn't. All right. I thought he let it go, but no. There we go. This one's a little bit better. This one's respectable. There we go. Got us a good one, boys. Hoggy doggy. That will do it. 
Thank you very much. Let's get you a little release and we'll see you next time. First good fish of the day. Trench hogs caught three fish. Holding strong out here. What else we got? Here we go. Started recording a little late. Come on. There we go. Fish on that saucy swimmer. A good one too, bud. You're like, go ahead and just spot walk it. All right, back to the fish. Wow, Chunk, look at you. Oh man, you weren't going anywhere. That was caught on that good old saucy swimmer with that underspin. That's that goby color, 4.8 inch. Healthy fish, look at that. All right, 2.2, 2.16, about two and a quarter. Then throw in the bottom baits for a hot minute. Figured I'd go ahead and switch it up. That was only like second or third cast with the saucy swimmer. So we might've found what they're kind of going after. Be free. <laughs> These guys are feisty. Torrance is on a good one. Looks like a good one. There we go. <laughs> little dude. Oh, skimming you. Guess I'm going over there. I just changed my GoPro battery. And so you guys can see, I just caught a fish. Well, the wind's a little low right now. I'm gonna tell you all a little bit about the saucy swimmer and another one in the books. Fish number five for me. I think Weston's up to like, I don't even know, six or seven. T's got a whole hell of a lot. So, hey, go grow up, become a big fish. This is probably one of my number one confidence baits right now. Uh, with this underspin, it just gives it that little extra flash. And these big old hooks, I mean, if a fish gets hold of it and it penetrates, this fish ain't going anywhere. Some of the strongest hooks I've ever come across. They stay put pretty dang impressed by this saucy swimmer as well because for all of my four catches, I think I'm up to five fish. The first fish I caught was very first cast with that mission fish. And then I figured I'd go ahead and change it up. Both Torrance and Weston were throwing bottom baits. I went ahead and I was like, screw it. I mean, if I slow roll this on the bottom, I'll probably get some catches and sure enough I did. But this is a pretty dang sweet setup and like I said I'm pretty impressed by these saucy swimmers because I haven't had to actually change saucy swimmers the entire four catches. Maybe let's try and get a couple more. I'm kind of contemplating uh, switching it up to a bottom bait just to throw something different and get a couple of different bites. See if I can't throw this a few more times and get another fish before I do. I think this might get some fish quite quickly. Oh, is there a fish on here? He must have picked it up on the run. Is there? Yeah, I do have one. Didn't even feel the bite. Okay, he came off because I didn't get a good hook set. That was uh, that was crazy. I was just whipping it up over the grass. I did not feel the bite at all. I was just literally like whipping it like this to get the blade free, and then all of a sudden I had a fish on there. That was the weirdest chatterbait bite I have ever had, and I didn't get a good hook set, which is why I lost that fish. Going pro 2021. Come hit the chatterbait, boys. Huh. There he is. What do we got here? Small or big? Small. Oh boy. Got a teeny one. Teeny one. Oh yeah, we got a teeny one. That might be the third fish in the boat for me. Fourth fish? I don't, I don't really know. We've got a handful on the T-Rig now. Thing seems to be knocking it out. Throwing this trench hog is going to yield a large result over time. This is definitely the bait to attract a big one to, uh, to bite, but I haven't found that right one just yet. Yeah, you can get away with using your plastics on Texas rigs for quite some time, man, especially something like a trench hog where you got a little bit more length because you can just rip off the nose. After you set the hook quite a few times, it tends to rip the nose of your plastic. So you kind of break a little bit off and then you can go back through there, but then also where you texpose your hook, it might be all beaten up right here, but now I've just moved it down about a half inch. And so we've got fresh plastic to texpose our hook into as well. So you can really get away with using your soft plastics uh, for quite a few catches. I don't know how aware of the kayak these fish are, 
but I seem to be having much better luck at the very end of my further casts. Just something to think about when you're on the kayak is how aware are the fish that I'm right above them. So in this clear water, you'll find some fisheries that these things, they don't mess around. If they know there's a boat, if they know there's a kayak, they're already on high alert. They've been caught before, man, so. There we go. Got him right off the tree. I think this is another little one here. Another advantage of this pedal kayak, you can kind of back yourself off away from some structure and everything as you reel these fish in. All right, we are on the fish this morning. This is fun. Bad healthy bass out here. Another one bites the dust. Let's get you back in here, buddy. Thank you so much. Got another one, huh? Oh, Torrance has got so many fish. Oh, Devin's got one. Pretty sure the GoPro overheated and possibly didn't save this catch as clip, so we figured we'd put him on the big camera and get an underwater release for you guys. Another solid, probably two and a half pounder. These fish are so healthy. This is that goby color. These fish are absolutely munching on it. This guy smoked it. He choked it. Get that release for you guys and get back to fishing. All right, y'all just got another one on the hog. That is, uh, that's gotta be number five if I ain't caught five already. I've had quite a few more bites too, but hey man, we will take them. The fish are on today. Let's get them back in the water. We'll see you, buddy. See ya. Y'all, this trench hog is doing work. This is the same trench hog that has caught every fish. Been a while since I've done the hog, man, so this is refreshing. Nice to get uh, some action on a, not only a bait I, I haven't thrown in a while, but also a color I haven't thrown in a while for that matter. Like a lot of soft plastics I haven't thrown in this Alabama craw color. You guys gotta try this thing out. Remember all Guggen baits you guys can get out at discount. I've got a couple links down below for you guys. Whether you wanna save with Carl's Club, get 30% off, but it requires the membership. So I would do that if you do, if you wanna order tackle in bulk, or you can just save 15% off for something like a one-time purchase if you wanna grab some of these baits. And you can do that through the Guggen Squad website or app. Again, all this is in the description. Let's see about getting some more. Well, if you want to know what's catching the grass, definitely the jig. <laughs> so basically what's working today is the um, T-Rig. We just got a screw lock hook on there and then it's a eight inch slim shake. I think this is the June bug color. Uh, we're just keeping it really simple. Basically just hopping it off the bottom, low and slow. And I've caught about nine fish already on it. Nothing of the size that we want, but the good thing is they're choking this. Uh, apparently the underspin's working. I'm gonna throw around the jig a little bit to try to get a bigger bass but that's what's working right now guys and if you guys have not checked out Torrance's page i'm gonna put his instagram down in the description man let's help him hit 13,000 followers he's very close you guys jump on over there check him out and give him a follow let's get back in the water i'm curious if this crank will get me something in the next couple minutes oh and i think that was a bass maybe yep yep that might be my biggest one yet <laughs> he's only like two pounds maybe <laughs> Crank producing now, we switched it up. We're on the banger. Oh golly, he's got some fight. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I think that is my biggest one of the day. Oh, easy, easy does it. Can't hold on now. You got trebles in you, boy. Oh, all right. Woo, banger producing the fatties. Right off the tree trunk. Thank you, buddy. All right. We're just switching it up today, man. The bite seemed to die down on the, uh, the T-rigs on the bottom. I figured I could scoop something off uh, these trees though with something moving, try it a little bit different, see what happens. And look at that, solid man, big old bass. This pond has completely gotten destroyed by us this morning. I really hope you guys have enjoyed that. Look at that bass right there, man. Let's go ahead and get this crank in here, see if we can get a couple more for y'all. I was just telling Torrance, cause that was probably like 10 casts in with the crank guys. Literally that was like my closest cast to an actual tree. Like, I mean, I like pretty much hit the branch. And when I went down, I'm sure I was immediately on some of those uh, higher or, or branches that were just slightly submerged where these bass I imagine are suspending a little bit. And he just, I mean, he snatched that thing up right off the bat. I honestly thought I was snagged for a second in the tree because of how close I was to it. So. Let's throw this crank around for a minute. By the way, guys, this is a square bill, and I think this is a uh, three to six foot diver or something along those lines. It's kind of a shallower diver, but uh, perfect for the depths we're fishing because you can see straight to the bottom, and a lot of this stuff here is like four, I think a lot of the grass is probably six foot down or less until you start really getting in it. So you wanna get pretty close to the bottom here 
or have the opportunity to get pretty low to the bottom. I can get a little bit lower by putting the rod tip closer to the water, but I'm kind of having it raised up. That way I don't dive way down into the grass. Since the specific area of the lake is a little bit shallower, I'm not trying to hit the bottom and just catch grass and get all that stuff all over these treble hooks every single cast. I know since how clear it is, these fish will see this bait above them and they'll be willing to swim up and chase after it. So I'm not too worried about getting down to the very bottom, but she's producing, so let's just keep chunking her. Just kind of trolling with the crankbait right now. You can see I got it wobbling off the edge here. This would be a first. Odd thing is, I think we can make it happen. Go over the kayak. I'm gonna steer left a little bit now. Try and hit some new waters over here. Oh, maybe, maybe. I think we got one. Got one trolling. Got one trolling the crankbait. I got one trolling the crankbait back to the truck. <laughs> <laughs> got him, boys. <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> Crankbait trolling as we make our way back to the truck. All right, bud. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. What a crazy morning bite. All right, man. We had a good old time out on the lake this morning, the private pond. Torrance got on a bunch. Yeah. We caught a few. And uh, Devin behind the camera, did you catch the biggest one again today or no? Maybe not. Okay, anyways. <laughs> two days in a row. Yeah, yeah, two days in a row. It's nothing new. It's not nothing yet. new at all. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. She's always on the big ones, man. But look forward to some more videos out here at the private ranch because we're actually going to hit a new spot right now. We're going to get to tearing them up for the rest of the day. Cheers to the next video. Cheers. Peace out. Shoo! <gasps>